Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us for the August ERM Toolbox webinar. A couple of housekeeping notes before we get started. If you've dialed in by phone and haven't logged in by computer and would like to see the tool that, as it's demonstrated today, please point your web browser to readytalk.com. In the box where it says participant, join a meeting, enter the same access code that you use to join the call, 987-9821. We're leaving the phone lines open so you can ask questions as they come up. Please stay aware of the level of background noise in your area, and if it starts to get noisy, please put your phone on mute. If you don't have a mute button on your phone, you can use the ReadyTalk controls, which are star 6 to mute and star 7 to unmute. I'll also be monitoring the phone lines and can individually mute uh, any line if we have problems with uh, background noise. If you're called away from the, the webinar, please don't put your phone on hold because that will transmit your hold music to everybody else. You can simply hang up and dial back in, and it won't disrupt the call. As I said, we're leaving the phone lines open for questions. Also, the chat box in the lower left corner of the screen is available. If you have any questions, you can type them there, and I will relay them to John at an appropriate point. And with that, allow me to introduce our, pre our presenter today. John Gregg is the UC Davis Director of Controls and Accountability, a UC Risk Services Center of Excellence in Enterprise Risk Management, and has been working with the Risk Services ERM team since October of 2009 in an instrumental role. John? Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the presentation today. We're going to talk about UC Radar. And we're going to show you the latest version of the tool, which will soon be available uh, through the ERM Help Desk. So our theme today is uh, <coughs> excuse me, putting risk appetite on your risk appetite radar screen. The, um, the goals today, then, I want to do just a very brief introduction of risk appetite. Describe the, uh, for, from the tool the design concepts and the goals, and then I'm going to go into a demonstration of the new tool that actually includes risk assessment. It includes a modified version of the higher education risk assessment tool. If you uh, may have seen on the, uh, <coughs> excuse me, the introduction to the uh, to this class, it. Um, Of course, your voice always goes out right before. It, it said on the introduction that there were originally tool, tool, two tools. But what we found in using in developing this tool is that we are pushing Excel to the limit. And putting two, two tools on was just a little more than Excel could handle. So we're going to actually have a second version of this tool available shortly. Uh, like I said, this one includes the higher education risk assessment tool, and the next version will include the control structures tool. So let me begin by talking about risk appetite. So if, any, if you've read the COSO internal control integrated or ERM integrated framework, you know the definitions of risk appetite. They're very simple, very straightforward. It's basically the uh, amount of risk you're willing to accept in pursuit of value. And then risk tolerance is is about variations relative to the achievement of objectives. Very simple concepts, but they weren't that easy to really define and make into an actual tool that you can use. What prompted everything from the beginning was the uh, Irmis dashboards. You know, when those first came out, and they still operate this way, where wh whatever you measure, it looks at the um, the average. It compares whatever whatever your showing uh, in terms of a metric or a KPI, it looks at what, what is the average. If you're more than 5% to the good, it's green. If you're within plus or minus 5%, it's yellow. And if you're less than 5% of the average, it's red. Problem, of course, with that is, is, is the average really the important uh, comparison? So what we've done with this tool, with UC Radar, is to develop a way to define your risk appetite, which can then be imported into Ermis, and you can have your dashboards compare to your risk appetite. The other thing that prompted us to take on this project were risk assessments. Now, going back originally, back in 1997, uh, when we first started doing risk assessments, the, we were using this traditional heat map. 
and in their very early days, if something had a high impact and a high likelihood, it was something you worried about. But we realize that there's kind of a flaw in this traditional heat map, particularly up here in this area, in the uh, upper, uh, the high impact area. If you have a high impact and a low likelihood or a very low likelihood, it shows it as being green. Is that something you really want to accept? For example, if you're at UC Berkeley and you have the Hayward Fault running right down the middle of your, uh, your uh, stadium, your football stadium, is that acceptable? Sure, it has a high impact and hopefully a, a relatively low likelihood, but I wouldn't call that green at all. Also, the traditional heat map uh, does not address risks that are over-controlled. Down in the very bottom part where you, have, you can have a low impact and a low likelihood, maybe in those cases we're over-controlling something. So if you've been with us for a while and you've looked at our tools, you've seen that we really use a heat map now, like the larger one here, where anything that's a high impact is something to be concerned about. And down in the low area, there are things that are, uh, you know, those would be indicators of risk that are potentially over-controlled. We don't have unlimited resources, so we'll want to take uh, mitigation efforts away from some of these risks down here and move them towards the higher risks and bring those down. Well, the tools like the current uh, spreadsheet tools actually have this heat map built into it where there is an implied zone of, um, of acceptable risk. This, here's the risk appetite as is shown in the current maps. But wouldn't it be nice if we can control this? If we can actually set for our location, what is our true risk appetite? Not just use the generic one, but use, use the risk appetite that we really feel we're willing to accept. And that's what led to the de development of UC radar. And in UC radar, you have a range. It will create a range of heat maps, depending on how you set your risk appetite. It could be anything from averse to undaunted, where you really don't care about risk, and anything in between. And what it does, too, in this is not just one heat map. There is one heat map generated for all risks, but the tool now also develops heat map by category of consequence. So when you do your risk assessment, and you'll see this in the demonstration, you'll be able to assign the risk to either to uh, the, any one particular category, or to all, or if you want to create a special combination of categories to compare the risk to, you can do that also. And I'll be demonstrating that. So once back in, this all started back in 2011 at the Risk Summit. When we started looking at the Irmis dashboard and asking questions, well, could we be more effective in terms of the red, yellow, and green? And we conducted exercises and came out of that with the idea of, well, we should form a group to really discuss risk appetite and come up with a tool. And we we're going to start out looking at the Vice Chancellor of Administration risk assessments. And basically, these questions you see here were kind of the kickoff things, you know, how can we use the reports that we have and get information out to the decision makers and allow campuses, the key one, and this is what the tool really does, is allow campuses to set their own thresholds and risk appetites. The team that uh, got together, here's the, here's the membership of the team, and we had, a, had some good discussions. We started out um, with the intent originally of uh, getting it together quarterly, but we quickly realized we wanted to discuss this monthly, so we had a conference call every month and talked about it and came up conceptually with the ideas behind the tool. I'd also like to point out on this uh, list two people that really stood out, put in a little extra effort, not a little, but a lot of extra effort into this. One is Hans Good from Berkeley. Hans got together with me, and we had uh, additional sessions where we brainstormed all, uh, took a lot of things that we were talking about in committee and really went through them and came up with the, uh, some of the ideas that appear in the actual tool. 
And then Sean Cannonese from Pickmore Risk Services, he is the Excel programming genius who turned all our concepts into realities. So when we came up with the uh, designing the tool, we had these goals in mind. It needs to work at any level. It can, needs to be able to define, you need to be able to define your risk appetite from the strategic level all the way down to the unit level. That's accomplished by using multiple versions of this tool. You can take one copy and say, this is my strategic risk appetite, just save it under that name, you see radar strategic, and set your risk appetite that way. And you can take another copy and save it, figure out your risk appetite at the unit level, what it should be, and save that. And then you can distribute those copies to do risk assessments at whatever level. And you'll see that when we get into the tool how that's done. We also wanted maximum flexibility. It was very difficult really to look at risk, risk uh, categories. What we found was the best way to do it was to categorize the consequences of risk, because that's really what we're talking about when we're talking about risk appetite. Not that whether or not a particular risk occurs, but what is the outcome of that risk, and what is the likelihood of it happening, or what's the desired likelihood? And that's another point, too. This is not a risk assessment. When you're setting the appetite, you're thinking about what's the possibility of a particular risk occurring? And then, what is the desired likelihood? So we uh, built that into the tool. We also built in the tool that you can uh, edit the terminology to make it anything you want. We provide default terms and definitions, and you can change those. They're edit completely editable. So if you don't like what's there, you can make it whatever is most meaningful to your location. Also, too, impact and likelihood. They're not always of equal value or equal weight. So in the tool, you can set separate weightings for impact and likelihood within each category. And then you can also weigh the categories themselves as to which are the most, which are you want to emphasize or de-emphasize or just use the default value. The tool comes set at the default. Impact and likelihood are all 50-50, and all the categories are at the default level. You have the flexibility of changing those. And we wanted to... Um, also let you select categories to create a custom list if you were doing any kind of a specific risk assessment. Maybe you just wanted to look at something related to health and safety or something related just to finance or compliance. Yes, I did. Hello? Question? Sorry. Okay. So there, there was that. Our original intent, too, and then we also provide spaces where you can comment. So when you take the tool to higher levels, you can have your justification right there next to uh, the impact and likelihood to state why uh, you selected a particular level as a reminder. So if you're going, say, to your chancellor or your care committee or your ACRC and higher level people are going, well, that doesn't, you know, how, why did you pick this? You can have some reminder notes right there to help you. And of course, creating the tool in and of itself uh, is useless unless you can apply the information. Our original goal was to export it. But um, what we decided is it was much better mechanically to actually build the risk assessment tools into UC Radar. So the tool is a combination of both the uh, risk assessment and, and the risk appetite tool. So let me go into the tool now, show you the demo, and we'll kind of walk through the tool. And if you were at UC uh, Risk Summit, you saw the risk appetite part of it, but I'm going to go th introduce this to you again. So we have a new front page on the tool, and basically you want to select your location. I'm going to uh, select... John, you need, you need to sh uh, share your desktop with us for us to be able to see the tool. Oh, okay. Let's see. Uh, top at the center top of the screen, there's a, a button that says share. Okay, let me see here. Okay, yeah, I had to pull down the uh, yeah. Excel. Sorry. Share. Okay. Okay, share. 
There we go. Okay. Good. Okay, now you should be able to see, you see uh, that's what we call radar, risk appetite definition and, ex and assessment of risk. So I'm now in the actual tool. This is live. So begin with, select your location. I'll just choose Davis for now. And uh, when the first time you use this tool, and I, I should say really that this tool is really designed to be used at different levels. So there are two parts to it. There's the administrative level user who's going to set the risk appetite. And then anyone else who's going to actually do a risk assessment compared to the risk appetite. So we don't envision, we never envisioned like sending this tool blank out to a department or something and saying do a risk, risk assessment with this. They won't know, have a clue about what to do with risk appetite. We envision this part, the administrative level user, being your ERM coordinator and your local ERM work group making the decision as to what is the risk appetite and then taking that to your higher level management and having them say, um, okay, I, we agree or let's modify it. And you come up to a consensus as to what the appetite is. Once you have that, then you can distribute the tool instructing people. You can either use it yourself or have someone else use it to use, I want to use the higher education risk assessment tool, say this is where they would start. So I'm going to start at the risk appetite tool to show you how this works. OK, now there's a return to the front page. This is how you switch back to the uh, to change tools. And I'm just going to use the Get Started button. So as I mentioned, the tool is designed around categories of consequences. These are reflected here in these buttons. And, every, and each one is a different page. Okay, I'm going to use life safety for demonstration purposes. But just by uh, hitting the button, it will take you to the, that appropriate page. My recommendation is, is that in setting your risk assessment, just go down the, um, each one. Just do all, the, all of them and then go to your waiting page and then to the summary. And that will set the risk appetite. We are providing default information, like I said. So each page is constructed the same. They're here for life safety. You see a definition of what that is. So life safety, we're, we're, concerning, we're concerned about risk causing human life to undergo mental distress, pain, injury, illness, or loss. There's a space here. And the way the tool is designed, it will be safety protected so that you could type on anything that is not shaded. If it's shaded, like out here, do not type on it. You won't be able to. Uh, but remember, this is Excel. And the way this system works is there are many linked pages, many hidden formulas. So one of the fundamental rules in using this tool is to do not add any columns or rows, and do not delete any columns or ro rows. If you do, it will mess up the tool. So basically, just work in the white areas. So if you wanted to add a statement for your location of risk appetite, you can do so here. Looking at the impact section here for under life safety, OK, it has a scale, five terms. You can change these terms if you want by typing them. We just set in default low to high. And we give you default definitions. So we set high as meaning multiple deaths medium-high, death or significant injuries, et cetera. If you want to change the weight of impact to likelihood, you can change that. Say I want to put a little bit more emphasis on, um, on impact. I'll put that at 65%. Oh, gee, it doesn't add up to 100 anymore, as you can see by this. I just have to come down here and change that to add to 100. So you just got to make sure it adds to 100%. We have a quick question in the chat yeah. box. Uh, does location equal campus, or can there be multiple locations within each campus? Uh, yes. OK. <laughs> Again, it, it's wherever you want to scope this tool. You, if you want, say, you, you wanted to do one, 
for your entire campus? Yes, you could have it. Campus location generally means a campus and A and R. But maybe you want to do a college within your campus, like Letters and Science. You could save the tool as Risk Appetite Letters and Science Strategic. You, know, you just name it. Just change the name. Again, this is Excel. You can make as many copies as you want, customize it as much as you want, or keep one and keep it as consistent. Keep it more consistent. Again, what we're setting is our criteria against which to judge risk. We're not doing a risk assessment here. So this is where you, you really have to have some discussions and do some soul searching. Everything's going to be default to the middle, to, to medium. But if we're looking at life safety, let's say we're looking at the campus as a whole, you know, I would look at appetite in terms of possibility of occurrence. Now, UC Davis, we have a medical center. We do, um, we have a lot, you know, with the medical center, there is the possibility of people dying. You know, we get diseases, mistakes happen. Uh, on the campus, we send people out on trips and vehicles. I mean, we had the unfortunate incident a number of years ago of a boating accident down in Baja, which result, actually resulted in multiple deaths. So what, what you're setting here really in terms of, you're not saying I'm doing a risk assessment. What I'm saying is with all our activities, what is the acceptable level of possibility? Not the desirable, but that it could happen. So I might select in life safety, go up one here, and what happens is if I change it, everything below the highest level changes to acceptable. So if I come down here, I hit that, and then I delete these, you see how it works? So what I want to set is what's the highest level of acceptable possibility here? I don't have to change anything below unless I just want to be clean. And like I said over here, I could put an explanation of why I marked that. So in the case of life safety, while we recognize that there is the possibility of some of the things we're doing, actually people getting severely hurt in terms like sporting events or things or uh, uh, maybe even human subject research or something, I mean, these are not things that we want. So I might select then for the desired likelihood very low. So what's that, what this is saying here is then is that I'm recognizing the possibility of death or severe disability, but we're going to put into place controls that will make it rare. We're really trying to make it rare and only on exceptional circumstances. And again, putting explanations in there. Okay, as I come down the tool then, I can, the next section as you can see, it starts generating a risk asset, risk guy, a heat map. So as you can see in this heat map so far that it's very, uh, very risk averse when it comes to life safety. I'm recognizing the possibility, but we're going to really work to drive that down. Now, this next section, I can set the tolerances. So this, tells, this is a scale that will also appear in the risk assessment tool to tell me that was a PTO for me. Oh, okay, we're hearing someone else. But anyway, the um, I can set here the scale to to give me um, warning when I'm approaching something. In a way, this little block here, this section, it's kind of like the gas gauge on your car, where this might be here, the upper quarter tank is full, things are doing well, I'm well within my... My appetite is fine as far as gas. I'm going to get where I'm going. Here I might change this maybe to 50%. I'm still within my risk appetite. Uh, maybe I want a little tighter warning here. Change that to 80. If I can change it to any number I want to approach this. And you see it, adjust, it adjusts the heat map accordingly based on these scales. So looking at uh, on this heat map here then, if we look at low impact here, you know, 
low impact, high likelihood. Okay, it's a little bit inverted, or you can look at it this way too. The high impact and the low likelihood is that, okay, it's exceeding risk appetite if I have a high impact and a low likelihood. It's within my risk appetite here if I have a medium high impact and a low likelihood. This is how it's going to judge my risks. I'm approaching it at this level, and then I'm within in these lower colors. Okay? The next part is then judging control effectiveness. This is your inherent risk. Okay? But what we're going to do is we're going to put in place, or we have in place, controls that will mitigate the risk. So here you can state how effective you want to have the risk. So it's set right now, and you can change again change the numbers if you want to hire. If it's more than 95, just change it. So if, if the control is more than 95% effective, it's very high. If it reduces the risk, the raw inherent risk, down by, oh, let's say, 70%. That's substantial. Then maybe I'll go to 30% here and 15% there for minimal. Now, as I adjust the effectiveness scale, and again, I can change the terms. If I don't like the, here I can also change the terms here. Anything that's here, if you don't like the terminology, you can change it. If it's, uh, this part here is saying then, what we judge, um, when we do our risk assessment, we're looking for the risk assessment to tell us if a risk is over-controlled, adequately controlled, or under-controlled. And that's what this map here shows. So what this translates, ta this map takes everything I've said above and puts it into a, a map showing then. So if, I, if my control effectiveness here in the red can go from substantial down to minimal, I can still be exceeding my risk appetite. In this area, I'm approaching if my uh, control effectiveness after I do the assessment winds up here, I'm approaching it, and then I have my, my zone, my, uh, my true appetite where I really basically would like things. And this part describes what it would take to have something be over-controlled. So if something is rates very high in this area, again, these are scales. This is a pictorial representation of ranges. That's why you see the colors and, you know, well, if it's substantial, what is this up here? Well, it's just rating higher in the scale of exceeds than the scale of approaches and within. See, so that this, will, this also gets tr uh, exported over to the risk assessment tool. But this is basically all I need to do to show the risk appetite, to set the risk appetite for that category. And then there's the uh, same thing for the next categories. I can change those. And I went and put through, um, I put different settings and ones to show you that what you'll get when you get to the waiting one, the last one. So these last two buttons summarize what, what happened in each category. So the waiting tool shows the results of your risk appetite. So as you can see here in life safety, I have a very low risk appetite relative to the maximum risk and environment. Now these vary in height because of settings of impact and likelihood uh, percentages or the ratios. They'll, they'll tweak a little bit. But I can also adjust this scale looking at the total big picture to say, I want to emphasize something as being more important here. So I can come in here and say, okay, I want to emphasize life safety. And I want to end this, uh, we have a hospital, so I'm going to emphasize health care. Okay, so those are more important. Uh, maybe capital assets isn't as important as others or something, so I'm going to just, for example, de-emphasize that. See, so you see these change, can be changed, adjusted, setting the weightings. Now, I mentioned earlier, maybe you want to do something with a special combination. Maybe I want to look at a risk and compare it to financial. And let's see, what else do I want to put in there? How about research? 
Okay, and so what it does is it takes from these, uh, you can do whatever combination you want here, creates a special combination column that combines just the selected categories of consequences that you can then apply in the risk assessment. Okay, and then the last part summarizes everything, shows you all. So based on the settings I have, it generates this scale here showing for impact. Now you can see here the percentages. Combining my weightings of impact and likelihood, I'm 54% on impact and 48% on likelihood. Then these X's combine where all those scales were set for impact and likelihood. It then also combines the RIF figures out on the risk appetite where the thresholds are for the terminology. It generates a combined heat map here. This is if you use select all on the, uh, on the risk assessment. I'll show you that in a second. It will, it, will, it will compare your risks relative to this heat map. And same thing down here, combines that averages out the effectiveness scale and shows the risk ratings that it will use in deciding whether something is adequately controlled, potentially poorly controlled, poorly controlled, or over controlled. Okay, and that's that's all there is to the risk appetite. Any questions so far? Okay. So once I have this, so I'm the ERM coordinator. I've done this for my location or my campus. And I'm going to take it to my work group. We're going to talk about all these settings, come to consensus. Then we're going to take this to our ECRC or care group and get executive buy-in. So now we've established the risk appetite. And again, if I'm going to do, if I want this at different levels, I could create one of these for strategic level, one of these for campus level. If I want to do something specific to, say, the College of Letters and Science, I could do one for that or one for the medical center. Maybe I want to do something specific for the medical center. And that would, you know, that would make sense, whereas in the medical center we would be emphasizing life safety and health care and things. Some of the other areas, maybe not so much. Maybe another area I would emphasize financial. So again, you could create whatever is most effective for your risk assessments. So like I said, once, once I've got my appetite, I now have a tool where I can assess risk against that risk appetite. So back to the very first page. I've done this. Now you can distribute this tool to others to do risk assessments and you know, give them the instruction, do not touch risk appetite. Leave that alone. You're to use just this part, the higher education tool. So it brings over from, from the tool, I've already indicated that I'm UC Davis. I can enter information just like we do on the other tools and get started with the risk assessment. So what it does here that's different is it brings in new definition. In other words, when we did the risk assessment, we went through and we defined for all the risk categories what they mean. What is the impact? What is the likelihood? It combines those. So you can see here in one, and you can print this out as one page to hand out on a risk assessment. It gives people a combined definition to use if they're voting on impact and likelihood. Okay, now likelihood in this case is shorter because we're using basically the same terminology. If we had different terms, it might put it together. And, uh, and it also shows the combined control effectiveness from the risk appetite scale. So anyway, this can be printed out on one page as a handout if you're doing a facilitated session. And then you go into the assessment just like you would do before. Now there are some new things in the risk assessment here. So I filled out a lot of other ones. I left the first one kind of blank so we could do it. So if we look at domestic terrorism, animal rights activists, eco-terrorists themselves, that's a risk. And these risks, it'll, it comes populated with the risks from uh, ERM Bulletin 12 that we've used, basically the VCA risk assessments. Again, you can, 
we're going to have a blank one too where you could type in the risks, uh, either one. So you can then say, okay, here for risk type, I can actually set the category that I want to use. It's currently set to research. I could go to all. Let me kind of zoom this in a little bit here so you can see it a little better, I'm sure. Okay. Oops, kind of running away on me here. Okay. So here's, um, okay, so that's kind of locked in. So I have a choice here. I, these are the same categories that were in the risk appetite tool. If I want to associate it with any one category, they're all in here. All I have to do is highlight, like maybe domestic terrorism. I want to, I want to assess it in terms of life safety. Okay, and uh, if I would just want to use all, I would select all. Or if I had a custom setting. You know, I did a, if I did a special combination that I wanted to use in the risk assessment, that's the last one. So you could select the combination too. So th what this does is, you remember you've set impact and likelihood by category. So it's going to use the impact and likelihood scales for that category as opposed to the combined one for all or the special combination that you added. So this is just part of the risk assessment now is to decide what risk type, okay? Um, so I'm going to go, I'll use my life safety that I had in there. Okay, let me shrink. And what I can do is then I can select the impact. Now what you see here too compared to other tools, this tool now brings in, it summarizes the definitions a bit to help with deciding, you know, Domestic terrorism, what's the possibility? Well, let's see. Um, we've got some terrorists, maybe illness, maybe it's medium. Okay, and the likelihood, what is the likelihood? Again, you see the definitions up there too as well. Okay, I'm going to say medium high because we've had a lot of activity here. Okay, and uh, let me shrink this down so we can show more of the screen. So here we would type in, you know, what are we doing now? What are our current mitigations? You can select here how frequently they occur. And just as in before, we now have, uh, you know, you could select control effectiveness. So in this case, we're high. And what it does then is, now you see two columns over here. So if this is saying then that, this risk where we're set right now at medium impact, medium likelihood, and substantial on the control effectiveness is just potentially poorly controlled. See, whereas if I had a high, it would be adequately controlled. But the next column also tells me I'm exceeding my risk appetite. So as you can see here, you now get an indication not only of your control effectiveness for depending on the category you choose, but also how, how your risk relates relative to the risk appetite. Now, I can change, if I change categories, it's going to go back to NA. Remember, we're dealing with Excel. Excel is not, this is, we went to Excel because it's something that could be easily used on any, practically any computer, but with Excel comes a few quirks. So one of the quirks is if I change categories or if I go back, I'm in the middle of a risk assessment, and I change something in the risk appetite, I have to come in and I have to reassess that risk, at least change the category, change, excuse me, change the impact, and it'll come back again. Okay, so don't, don't, don't be scared if it uh, gives you the, uh, the NA, okay? Now, also, we've added into the tool using Excel's filtering capabilities, whereas you can come here and sort, for example, by category, or if I wanted to go to, well, gee, what are my highest risks? Okay. So you can sort now. That wasn't something we didn't have before. 
So we're trying to use more and more of what's built into Excel to give you flexibility. Maybe I want to look at, well, that didn't work too well. <laughs> so, Sean, you saw that one. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, there, okay. So, anyway, that's it, it's available where you can sort your risk assessment. Uh, and then there's the chart that we showed before here. I can bring up different categories. And it'll give me the, it'll show what the category is, where the uh, bubble size is the residual risk rating. And depending on how many risks I have. Ooh. Uh, I can note there, 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 healthcare is one that there's not anything uh, selected on that previous sheet. So okay. we don't have any healthcare specific risks, which is why that goes blue there. Okay, thank you, Sean. Okay, so you see that's an Excel feature then, undocumented feature. It tells you this. Now, one of the things we've also, we're also going to make available, actually it's actually been written, is a detailed user guide to help you use this tool. Um, so when you get the tool, you'll get the user guide, which walks you step by step through the risk appetite. And that's Basically, um, we can go back to the PowerPoint. Um, Emily, if you bring up the PowerPoint. Uh, you need to hit stop sharing, John. Uh, it's the little green arrow, one to the left. Okay. There we go. Okay, cool. And so if we go to, uh, okay, let's go down here. There. So that's the presentation I wanted to give. If you would like a copy of the tool, it will be available very soon from the ERM help desk. Here's the contact information for them, erm at ucop.edu. And if you have any specific questions, please feel free to contact me directly. Um, I've tried to break this thing a number of times. I've done a lot of QA on it, but you know, it, add the more it's used, the more we know if we miss something. So. We think we have a great tool, it will help you, and um, I want to thank you for your time. Are there any questions? Well, if we have no questions at this time, I think we'll wrap it up. The contact information is there on the screen. If you have questions, you can follow up with John or with the help desk. Thank you very much for joining us for this month's Toolbox webinar, and we hope to see you in September. Thanks, John. Thank, Thank you. you Thank you very much for putting this together. Thank you, Thank you John. Bye. 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 Thank you, everybody.